Okay, the small intestine. Um, first things first, the small intestine takes about three to five hours, somewhere in that range for the food to pass totally out of the small intestine, either going to the bloodstream with the nutrients or the waste products going to the large intestine. So at that point, then if you're if you're thinking about from stomach to um, you know from stomach to small intestine through it you're 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 looking at for an average of six to eight hours so seven hours for all that to occur all right so we ex the small intestine comes into play right after the pyloric sphincter from the stomach and then we'll go all the way to the um, ileocecal valve to meet up with the large intestine okay small intestine re receives chyme from the stomach and the liver and the pancreas as we mentioned earlier it absorbs now this is the main absor absorbing portion and it also completes digestion Anything left over will be transmitted, of course, to the large intestine. There are three parts to the small intestine, okay? The duodenum is the shortest, but it's really the most important in that it, this is where everything meets, and we, we add the juices of the small intestine here, and this is about 10 uh, inches long. The jejunum, which is the next portion, second portion, is about eight feet long. And then the ilium, the long, largest portion, is roughly about 12 feet. Now, if you stretch all of that out, of course, um, you're talking about 20 feet in a cadaver, but since there's muscle tone, it only goes between 7 to 13 feet in a living human being. The jejunum and the ilium are, are suspended by a double layer membrane called the mesentery. It's basically the peritoneal membranes. And that transports blood and lymph to the walls of the intestine. A double fold called the greater omentum will drape over the stomach and over the large intestine and even the folds of the small intestine so this is a covering that's all that really is okay it's a covering um <clears throat> so this is kind of where the duodenum lies right in here this area and then of course we've got the jejunum in there and then most of this here is the ilium going that way so jejunum duodenum and ilium and isn't that good looking art there okay so this is how it looks like inside of a body on the right hand portion you can see the mesentery the omentum all over it inside the wall of the small intestine now keep in mind it has those four layers they have there are these little finger like projections and there are just um, you know billions of these things they're called intestinal villi okay intestinal villi and <clears throat> these little villi these little villi increase the surface area so that you can absorb more of the nutrients each villus singular has, is a simple colander so it's got obviously you know what that looks like and it's got blood vessels has a has some connective tissue and it also contains a lymph capillary called a lacteal now remember those transport dietary fats okay on the epithelial cells there's even microvilli which increase more surface area okay now there are all kinds of intestinal glands um, that we'll get to in their secretions. And of course, finally, there is something called the 
circularis, which are circular folds of the mucosa. Everything here is increasing the surface area so we can get the most out of this. This is one villus. This is a really good depiction, often called finger-like projections. Okay, here would be your epithelial cells. Um, I'm sorry, your microvilli under a, a microscopic look. Okay. These circular folds are the plica uh, circularis, and again, that's just, all that's doing is increasing the surface area for more absorption. Okay, so here are the secretions. Um, there are some um, mucus secreting glands, Bruner's glands, for instance, that secrete very alkaline mucus. Okay. There's the other intestinal gland to create a watery fluid, which transports all the materials to the villi, okay? It does not have digestive enzymes, though. Here are the digestive enzymes. Peptidases break down peptides into their core component, which are amino acids. You have 20 amino acids that, uh, that exist and each one's important to the human body. Now these sucrase, maltase, lactase break down, these are all disaccharides and they break down the food into monosaccharides, mainly glucose, and that's critical for the digestion of those carbs. And again, we have some lipase that will then break fats into their component parts, which are fatty acids and glycerol. So as you can see here, and this is a table that I would definitely, definitely keep handy on like any assignment, test, whatever. These, this is the list of the major digestive enzymes, what secretes, uh, what, what their really their action is, okay? Now, how do we regulate the intestinal secretions? Well, we know that mucus is secreted in response to gastric juice entering the small intestine and some mechanical stimulation of food getting into that small intestine. And we start to have these little movements. That's the mechanical stimulation, okay? Whenever the small intestine stretches or, dis or distension happens, it activates nerves in the walls of the small intestine, and that stimulates the parasympathetic um, reflexes to get those enzymes secreting. So stretching of the small intestine gets those things flowing. Okay? Without question, I add this underlying sentence here, the small intestine is the most absorbing organ. No doubt that's, an, you know, super duper important. Carbohydrate digestion and absorption started really in the salivary glands and in, then to the pancreas. But it is here that monosaccharides are created from the digestion of the disaccharides. If you recall way back when, then glucose, which is a monosaccharide, enters uh, into blood vessels in the villi through facilitated diffusion, with so no energy. Protein digestion started in, in the stomach by pepsin, continued via pancreatic proteases, okay, to get them smaller, and then finally, it's the internal intestinal pepsidases, peptidases that break them into amino acids. Again, this is then secreted into the blood vessel of a villi via active transport. Now, fat, a little bit different. We know that the liver emulsifies the fat, and then we have enzymes both in the small intestine and then from the pancreas. And what they do is they digest further into the component parts of glycerol and fatty acids, okay? Um, 
the way these are absorbed into the blood is a comprehensive set of steps. We also know that they're transmitted through the lymph and lacteals. Okay, so this shows you how fat is um, digested. And what will happen is the fats collect in clusters called chylomicrons. They're right here. And when they leave the epithelial cell, they'll go right into the lymph, which where we get this, um, you know, the lacteals. Okay. So the uh, chylomicrons go into the lymph and then they're transported via the lacteals. Okay. This shows um, all the different things that are absorbed in the small intestine. Keep in mind, we have electrolytes, water, of course, which always moves in osmotically, high to low, and um, electrolytes diffuse and actively transport. Okay, so we have two ways that food is moved through the small intestine, peristalsis, peristalsis and segmentation. One moves sort of longitudinally, that's peristalsis, it squeezes, kind of moves in that type of manner, and segmentation is that concrete truck where it starts to mix back and, back and forth, okay? Um, if the small intestine becomes over distended or irritated, then what may happen is there is a gigantic movement, very violent, called a peristaltic rush, where the contents go right into the large intestine and you will experience the dreaded big D diarrhea. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, anything, and, and again, just one thing here about these nervous, don't forget sympathetic inhibits, parasympathetic gets things moving. The ileosphincter uh, cecal sphincter joins the ileum to the beginnings of the large intestine called the cecum, okay? So that's where our next uh, journey is to go to the large intestine. 